school what are you doing with your life and i could be like oh this is what we're doing with our lives now you are gonna be obsessed with me once you get a taste it's happening my it's happening right now we'll see you in a second Where'd you go? Christine? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thank you for taking time out of your day to talk to me. You co-developed She. This one you're doing with your boy toy, just you and him. I was curious, is this like kind of the first time that you guys have worked together in this capacity? For sure, for sure, for sure. Cause it was like the first time that we were the leads and then we had to do like the planning and divvying up the work because we kind of collaborated together. But he actually, to me, I think inspired the idea and I knew Hector wanted to get into music. So I asked him one day, you know, how would you feel if you were actually the featured artist? And then we started kind of thinking of other people who could be a part of it too. So it was really cool to kind of get new people in our group and new people all together to kind of do this idea. So it was really fun working with him. I think we make a really good team. All right, well, it's it's the moment of truth. I'm gonna bring your boyfriend in. <laughs> What's up, hecky heck? Hey, baby. What's up, dude? Tell me your side of the story, how you guys came up with this idea. Cause to my understanding, you guys were taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> we were in a bathtub, fresh off the heels of she. Um, we were thinking of other ways to produce work. We just thought about putting on a performance series that would be uh, virtual. We were going to do eight different artists. Slowly it dwindled down, but we, we dream big when we start off. Yo, what's up, bro? Hey. <laughs> nice to see you, man. It's been so long. How yeah. you been? I'm good. What about you? Feeling great, bro. It's a beautiful day here in, in Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay, yeah, so you know what? Let's just skip the, the small talk and let's get right into it. Tell me about how you got involved with Revival. It was something that made me believe in something in the universe type thing that happened. I was interviewing for a job at a podcast studio in Manhattan. And Anthony was in that podcast studio that same day recording a podcast with a buddy of his. He had just happened to be making small talk to Brianna as this woman who runs this podcast studio. He was telling her about like revival, kind of the concept. And she was like, oh my God, like goosebumps. Like I, I just talked to someone that is looking for work in the New York area. Like I'll put you guys in touch. And literally it was like, she like introduced us in an email. Like it's just hysterical how that worked. What's up, what's up? Hello, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, man. All right, let's get started. Do you remember how you were feeling after you had to reset the lights or the after the iPad crashed? Dude, oh man. <laughs> yeah. I can do stuff off the seat of my pants and like do things live, but we're filming for this and like it needs to be cohesive. And I think that was the thing that was in the back of my mind all the time. How do I make sure that I'm making note of what I'm doing when? It was really helpful to have the team, but then yes, the app that operated all the lights crashed and it's like, all right, how do I, um, what did I just do? Um, so, but that's kind of what I was feeling on the first day was, am I gonna like be able to remember what I did today? Because we have to do it all again tomorrow in a different order. Hello. Hello. Let's rewind back to the beginning of Revival, right? You know you're on the set design team. What was the first order of business for you to s design a set? The first thing I did was start sketching. I like sketched out Studio One, getting a feel of that and saying, okay, who are we going to work on first? And we kind of had to talk to the different artists, sketching out everybody's set and trying to come into terms with what fit each artist personally to their music and to themselves. What we decided to do first off was listen to everybody's music that they had out thus far and see what we could come up with. And what was so funny is that we started scheduling meetings with the artists to then talk about or pitch our ideas to them. When we started pitching ideas to each other for what we thought the artists wanted, we were all on like different pages. And right before our first meeting, we were like, hold up. Maybe we should have asked them first 
to make sure that like we were at least pitching something that was along the lines of what they were thinking too. And that's where like the drawings came from. And then the individual artist meetings started coming much better. What's Play up? Backwards, <laughs> Why I order? No, I. Why I <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. Yet. Why I order? Why I order? <laughs> if you sexy, oh, you're all you know your oh, Sticking to the plan, I'm both feet in the sand. Yeah, I, I can kind of sing. I can kind of sing. <laughs> Wow. From the way from San Francisco, bro. It's true, it's true. You know, living in San Francisco, there are many challenges to lighting a space that you've never been to before from all the way across the country. Sure, I mean, I think the biggest thing is like not knowing what the space looked like. It was a really, really cool experience and affirming experience in terms of like lighting design for myself. So I was like, I can, I can do this. I'm a huge person of like feeling. So like I start with like, what do I want it to feel like based on this lyric or this kind of beat and stuff. Someone I need is she. Who's this? <laughs> There's a baby! <laughs> that means hey, what's up, baby? <laughs> Take what's in nine and put it in eight. and put it in eight. Now can you do that same thing one more time? Floor time, overhead lap. You had to start your work day one. How could you prepare for something like that, not even being in the city? I mean, yeah, I didn't get the equipment until the day before, but we knew like a lot of my time was spent like grinding on YouTube videos. Like, okay, this is the board that I'm gonna have. So when Laura asks me for less kick in her in-ear pack, I need to make that not take an hour to do. If that wasn't quick, that would have very much changed the timetable of revival. Bro, when I couldn't get sound from the computer, that conceptually to me was such a simple thing. Like, why can't I play music to the in-ears? I was on the phone with the rental people. Like I, we were going through forum posts, looking at how to do this. Like, I'm not afraid to say, like I called my mom. I told her, I was like, I can't do this. I was freaking out. Like I didn't have a solution, but through people being there for me and my own perseverance, I figured out a solution, which I didn't think was possible. That was definitely a moment where I didn't think things were gonna go as well as they did and they went way better. You did the mock-up drawings, put words from visions on screen and took that drawing and made it into reality. Yeah. I feel like overall we all had like an idea of each person's set, how we're gonna put it up, how it's gonna be taken off. We did the hardest person first and then stripped down to the easiest. We had to think about all the heaviest stuff that we had to put on. So like working around that drum kit was a little difficult just because it had been mic'd. We had to put grass mats underneath it, the other drum mat underneath it, then strip it down, clean the whole area. It was hard. <laughs> but I felt like in those hard times, we kind of leaned on each other a little more and it made it so much easier. Literally between the takes, cause we knew it was gonna be a process to break down and set up. We were like, if you can rip something off the set, put it in a place and put this other thing on. I'm pretty sure we were like shouting, who could help PAs get this, do that. Who can get on a ladder, get on the ladder. And that was pretty much the only way we could have done that in that short amount of time to kind of make up for more filming time. It felt so good to draw something and then build it and seeing it fully set out and being like, yo. Oh my God, this is beautiful. So then it kind of like came all together that way. Okay, okay guys, so we got triple chocolate layer candle. That's what I was about to ask him. And I got this candle that is the most complex candle I've ever seen. 14 incredible candles. Oh that sings birth God. happy birthday for you. Do you need help to light this candle? Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's legit, bro. 
Yeah. Everyone yeah. think of a wish. Oh god. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, I'm scared. See? Is it gonna? Oh, is it gonna? Oh. Happy birthday to you! Is that a flower candle? Happy <laughs> birthday to you! Thank you! I'm kinda scared of this actually. Oh, wait, it's rotating. You gotta wait until it gets to the yes. We're just gonna do a quick team meeting just to kind of round up before we do sound check for Brandon Sat, and then we get everything moving and schmoving. Huge props to you, bro. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. I mean, I'm not surprised that you're a good coordinator. <laughs> what was the most stressful moment for you, and what was the most gratifying moment for you? This role, funny enough, I kind of wasn't stressed the whole time. You know, the, the music it was one thing that was fun is that the music was made weeks before the event. And my first song is a song that I wrote the actual week before because Gloom's Brandon sent me a beat. And I was like, oh, wait, I only have two songs. This could actually work perfectly. OK, all right. Oh, that is crazy, right? Can we get everybody at first position? I was also DP, and at first when I kind of took on that role, while also being the, the, one of the artists, in that mode of creation when you're with so many people, I felt like I learned a lot about myself and, and the environments that I want to be in. Directing in that way and, and, you know, coordinating with Michael, who's insane, talking to the band and then coordinating with Charlie and then coordinating with the visual team. I think that's like, well, that was really fun for me. And it really felt like I had found my thing. I found like where I wanted to be. I was like, oh, this is really great. Collaborating in this way, it feels really good. And learning that was really cool. Oh, bro, do you remember when, uh, when Brandon was like, I don't know if I could do this, like mid performance? I have never seen the resilience that I saw out of Brandon. Like, like I get ch I get goosebumps like talking about that moment. When you see the footage of like the actual performance, this dude's a fucking rock star. That moment is made even better because hearing how good it sounds and knowing what was on the verge of happening with that, like, is just it, it's so beautiful. Uh, no, we can stop, stop, and you can turn off the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't really have because. We can do whatever kind of magic we fucking need to do to get that part solid. And that is so incredibly fixable, not even funny. And also, I know you can get it. We also have another whole day tomorrow. I don't, do not agree with cutting us. Okay. It's fucking gorgeous. The lights are fucking sick. You guys are killing it. I thank you. And you're doing a fantastic job. I'm sorry, I'm just the Everybody here right now, bro, is here to tell you that it's fucking phenomenal, bro. Yeah, this is what you needed, bro. This you is it. This, man. You hear me? Yeah, bro. I think my favorite part about Revival was just seeing how happy the performers were and just literally seeing their Revival happen in front of your eyes. They all deserve it. Laura Gloom's friend, they all did fantastic jobs and I'm really happy to see them in this light as well. It was a room full of love and support and I've never felt so much love from a group of people before. Personally, I just want to say that it was such a pleasure watching you work. It was such an honor to be in the same room. It was such an honor and, and affirming moment of this whole production was. You absolutely killed it. <laughs> you made it seem so seamless and- Bro, you're making me blush. Can you see me blushing through this screen? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah!